Gordon Lightfoot, the iconic folk performer whose silvery refrains offered a story of Canadian identity that was sold abroad, died at 84. Victoria Lord, the family's longtime publicist, said the singer-songwriter died of natural causes at Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto on Monday evening. He has many health difficulties. Lightfoot recorded 20 studio albums and wrote hundreds of songs, including Early Morning Rain, Carefree Highway, and Sundown. We have lost one of our greatest singer-songwriters, tweeted Prime Minister Justin Trudeau late Monday. Gordon Lightfoot's music caught Canada's spirit and shaped its soundscape. May his music inspire future generations and his memory endure. Twitter users praised Lightfoot's work. A wonderful performer, said Stephen King, while Beach Boys co-founder Brian Wilson said rest in peace. Former Ontario Premier Bob Ray called him such a decent man and a musician with a magnificent tenor voice that will last forever, while Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield stated his poetry and melodies are an eternal inspiration. Lightfoot's ageless songs, deemed rare talent, by Bob Dylan, have crossed decades and genres. Elvis Presley, Barbara Streisand, Harry Belafonte, Johnny Cash, Anne Murray, Jane's Addiction, Sarah McLachlan, and most surprisingly, dance supergroup stars on 54 turned his classic, If You Could Read My Mind, into a disco pop curiosity for the 1998 movie 54. His lyrics are extremely autobiographical and tackle national identity issues. The 1975 song, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald recounted a Great Lakes ore freighter's fate, and 1966 Canadian Railroad Trilogy dramatized the railway's development. I simply write the songs about where I am and where I'm from, he remarked. I write poems on situations. Lightfoot, a poetic storyteller, was mindful of his cultural impact. He took his duty seriously. I just like to stay there and be a part of the totem pole and look after the responsibilities I've acquired over the years," he stated in a 2001 interview. How does it feel to be an icon? He said modestly. It makes me feel like a human on earth. Lightfoot's parents recognized his musical aptitude early on, but he didn't plan to become a famous balladeer. He joined his church choir and wanted to play jazz. The soprano won Massey Hall's Kiwanis Music Festival Talent Contest at 13. I remember the thrill of being in front of the crowd, Lightfoot remarked in a 2018 interview. It helped me. My father drove. I did events everywhere. Weddings, clubs, the ladies' auxiliary. I played. The Collegiate Four, his high school barbershop quartet, won a CBC talent competition. He picked up a guitar in 1956 and started creating songs soon after. He failed algebra the first time, possibly distracted by music. In 1957, he graduated. The Hula Hoop Song, inspired by the trending children's toy, was Lightfoot's first serious piece by then. After failing to sell the tune, he studied music in the U.S. His hometown resort line and delivery job helped afford the trip. However, homesick Lightfoot returned to Canada. He worked at Royal Bank before becoming a square dancer on CBC's Country Hoedown. Fran's Restaurant, a downtown family-owned cafe, welcomed his folk music. He met guitarist Ronnie Hawkins there, who advised him to play at Steele's Tavern. Lightfoot was living with a few friends in a condemned building in Yorkville, a bohemian neighborhood where future stars like Neil Young and Joni Mitchell learned their craft in smoke-filled bars. He befriended local folk duo I.N. and Sylvia, who became fans of his music and recorded two of his songs as his popularity rose. Remember Me, I'm the One was Lightfoot's 1962 radio debut, which led to several hits and collaborations with local musicians. That same year, Lightfoot became the Mariposa Folk Festival's most loyal returning performer. By 1964, he was getting positive word of mouth throughout town, which attracted Bernie Fiedler, proprietor of Yorkville's Riverboat Coffee Restaurant, who offered him double at one of Lightfoot Steele's performances. Lightfoot's song, I'm Not Sayin', became a Canadian smash the next year, helping him gain popularity in the U.S. Other artists' covers helped too. Marty Robbins' 1965 version of Ribbon of Darkness topped U.S. country charts, while Peter, Paul, and Mary's version of Lightfoot's For Love and Me hit the top 30. 
Dylan once remarked he wished he'd recorded the song, which hundreds have since covered. Lightfoot at the Newport Folk Festival the same summer Dylan shocked crowds by playing an electric guitar. Lightfoot easily transitioned to pop music in the late 1960s as folk music peaked. He debuted on the Billboard chart in 1971 with If You Could Read My Mind, a song about a failed marriage compared to an old-time movie about a ghost from a wishing well. It hit no. Five and generated several covers. Sundown, Lightfoot's lone Billboard number one song and album, peaked in the mid 1970s. Lightfoot performed at Dylan's 1975 Maple Leaf Gardens Rolling Thunder Review. After filming, he gave a party for the crew at his home, singing his folk contemporaries' ballad in plain D, which eventually appeared in Dylan's pseudo documentary Rinaldo and Clara. Lightfoot's prominence led to public intrusions into his personal life. His 1973 divorce from Swedish wife Brita Ingigerd Olesen was billed as Canada's most expensive divorce settlement. When my first marriage broke up, it took me years to get over it, he told the Canadian press in 2012. My wife and kids were great, but the business ate me up. Women devoured me. I couldn't resist. Now, not then. Then it was alcohol, which is the biggest cause of trouble. Indeed, Lightfoot publicly struggled with alcoholism and other issues, particularly with the women who inspired his lyrics. His 1975 song, Cold on the Shoulder, is said to depict his broken relationship with Kathy Smith, a problematic ex-girlfriend who haunted him. Seven years after its publication, Smith was convicted of involuntary manslaughter for drugging comedian John Belushi to death. Tabloid coverage brought Lightfoot into the scandal. He despised being labeled a drug user because he dated Smith over a decade before her hard drug use. He felt obligated to help her recover. He offered her money and helped publish her memoir after her 1988 prison sentence. Lightfoot married Moon in 1989. In 2011, his second marriage ended with two children. He married Iowa-born Kim Haas three years later. Despite their 23-year age difference, Lightfoot and Haas were inseparable at public gatherings. It's actually quite surprising. I never thought I'd have a girlfriend again for as long as I've lived, he added. Haas, six children, and several grandkids survive Lightfoot. Lightfoot won 12 Jumas, including a 1970 Gold Leaf, the 1960s RPM Awards, predecessor to the Jumas, named him top folk vocalist four times. He was nominated for four Grammys, got an Order of Canada Award in 1970 at 32, and was elevated to Companion in 2003. He was inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame in 1986. He entered the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame in 2001 and got the Governor General's Award in 1997. Lightfoot made his acting debut in the 1982 Canadian film Harry Tracy, Desperado, starring Bruce Dern and Helen Shaver. Later in the decade, he played a musician with alcoholism on Hotel, drawing from his own experience. His late career was plagued by health issues that hindered but rarely prevented live performances. He had an aortic aneurysm in 2002, slipped into a coma, and underwent two and a half years of recovery. His voice lost some of the starch after the health scare. He temporarily lost use of his right hand while playing guitar after a 2006 stroke. Still touring, he maintained his fitness with six-day workouts. Lightfoot discovered his own death when CanWest newspaper websites published the fake headline in early 2010. The media organization picked up social media buzz that was tracked back to a prank call to late musician and friend Ronnie Hawkins' management office. Lightfoot took the prank in stride, stating he learned of his death while driving home from the dentist. I was quite surprised to hear it myself. He laughed to CP24. Lightfoot completed 80 tours in one year six years later. His three alternate set lists were highly focused and ran two hours and five minutes each. In an interview with CP, he remarked, At this age, my challenge is doing the best show I can. I'm much better and take it more seriously. Touring cost him personally and left him with guilt in his latter years. I wasn't always the dad I should have been, he said of his absence from raising his six children. I've improved that for years. At 79, cigarettes, that is, he said in 2019. 
He returned to the stage four months later to reopen Massey Hall after a mid-2021 fall at home. Those shows started a year-long tour. Due to unclear health issues, the singer's representatives canceled all forthcoming gigs in early April. Lightfoot's hometown installed a four-meter-tall bronze sculpture honoring him. He later received various local honors. I thought, why me? What have I done to deserve a statue, a very artistic work? He asked. To have a monument of this kind and the location here at the Mariposa Folk Festival, it's very appropriate. The Canadian press published this item May 1, 2023. CP's David Friend, funeral is still not announced.